Arms Warrior, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin. Nothing strikes fear into the soul of an arena player quite like the best specs in the game playing together on the same team. Maybe you are playing these classes but not having the results you want. You might see posts on the forum saying how face roll the comp is, but are they right? Does having the best 3 specs in the game automatically make it the easiest comp? Today, we will be taking a deep dive into the strategies of one of the top warrior mage paladin teams in the world, showing you exactly what they are doing to dominate the North American ladder. Regardless of whether or not you play these specs, this video is for you. We will be going over advanced metagame tactics that you can apply to your own gameplay. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the highest skilled gameplay from Shadowlands Season 1. To kick things off, let's go over some general tips for playing WMP. One of the biggest differences between Warrior Mage and other Mage melee comps is that you aren't relying on massive coordinated setups to win games. Unlike comps like Windwalker Mage, you aren't gonna 100-0 targets in a single Stormbolt. Instead, you are looking to get consistent setups with your CC chains in order to gradually wear down enemy cooldowns. Because of this, there are a few adjustments you need to take into consideration. Unlike other Mage melee comps where you can 100-0 targets, Warrior Mage doesn't really have enough burst damage to completely 100-0 a target outside of an absolute perfect setup. Because of this, you should avoid cheaping your kill target and instead focus on keeping them below 80% HP before your setups. The short duration of Stormbolt makes it hard to 100-0 targets in its 4 second stun, so instead, kill targets should be kept within a lower HP range. Number 2. Focus on Disrupting Enemy Setups Warrior Mage Paladin is an attrition-based comp. Its defensive kit is best suited for for longer, drawn-out games. The warrior in this comp should act more like a support class than a damage class, disrupting important CC chains with interrupts and war banner and focusing on intervene on enemy cooldowns. Again, you aren't looking to win the game in a single all-in setup. Instead, you're trying to get short consistent ghosts to gradually wear down the opponents. Number 3. Look for 3v1 situations as much as possible. WMP has so many CC options and separate DRs, allowing for huge cross CC potential. Many of your kill setups rely on Stormbolt on the kill target, with the Paladin or Mage cross CCing the other enemy targets. You should be flexible with how you use your cross CC. For instance, if the Mage is not in a position to Dragon's Breath Polymorph a healer on a setup, the Paladin should look for HOJ or Blinding Light into a setup if possible. Alternatively, Intimidating Shout can be be used to bridge any CC gaps on healers. There isn't a single cookie cutter setup for your kills, but instead a bunch of options that should be cycled through depending on the situation. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you always need to set up your kills in one specific way, but instead be flexible with your cross CC options. Now let's take a deeper dive into one of the strongest parts of this comp, Paladin Mage Synergy. One of the reasons these two classes synergize well together is their ability to cross CC enemy players. Remember that the goal of RMP is to try to find 3v1 setups as often as possible using whatever CC available to gradually force CDs. If enough 3v1 setups are performed, the enemy team will eventually run out of responses to the constant pressure dealt by the mage and warrior. Every player on this team can cross CC with each other because of the wide variety of control options available. Let's first look at a very basic form of cross CC that can be performed against most teams in the opener. Here we have a DK Cleave, which is one of the few setups that WMP can struggle with. DKs have a well-rounded toolkit for dealing with WMP, being able to break CC with Icebound Fortitude and Lichborn. When combined with Anti-Magic Shell, this makes them difficult to control for mage teams. Fortunately, with Invisibility active, the opener allows WMP to get cross CC started early in the game. Our mage runs in with Invisibility up, making sure to be out of line of sight of the DK, who could easily disrupt an opening polymorph with Death Grip. With the mage safely out of the DK's line of sight, the WMP coordinates a Dragon's Breath on the Paladin and Hammer of Justice on the Monk. With cross CC on both targets, the Paladin can't dispel their Monk and the Monk can't stop CC on the Paladin. This cross CC setup forces the Monk to use Trinket, Disarm, and Touch of Karma on the Warrior, all due to a single cross CC from the Paladin and Mage. Here you can see the power of cross CC in being able to force major CDs just seconds into the game in a difficult matchup. Now let's get the whole team involved and see how the warrior can contribute to cross CC. Remember that the goal is to get 3v1 setups as frequently as possible and gradually wear the enemy team out of CDs. This means using whatever tools are available to you and not relying on a single CC setup. First, let's check out the position of the enemy shaman and the enemy warrior. 
One strategy used by the best mages in the world is to bait melee DPS far away from their healer in order to open up CC options on the healer. With the enemy warrior being far away from his team, he will be unable to use war banner or intervene if his priest is under pressure. And with this bait set on the enemy warrior, the mage uses dragon's breath on the warrior at the same time an intimidating shout lands between gobos, the mage is able to lock the shadow priest on shadow. We now have triple CC on the enemy team which was set up by baiting the warrior far away from his partners. With the priest now in a storm boat and the warrior and shaman both stuck in CC, the WMP is in a massive advantage over the enemy team. Dispersion is forced onto the priest and the WMP is able to extend the CC chain on the shaman with an HOJ. Major CDs have already been forced on the enemy team and we are only a few seconds into the game. With the HOJ on the Shaman, the mage is able to cross CC again onto the warrior and then Ring of Frost to extend the CC chain even more. Now let's watch that whole sequence again. Remember that as WMP, you have the same CC DRs as RMP. When these DRs are all available for an enemy healer, you can land a massive CC chain. This CC chain gets opened up by baiting the warrior far away from his team, preventing him from stopping the setup with war banner or intervene. With the warrior baited away from his team, cross CC off options are opened up, and once this happens, major defensives need to be used by the opponents. Before we continue, we wanted to quickly tell you about the amazing content on our website. If you're looking for a place to build your skill set on any class, make sure to check out skillcaps.com wow. There, you will find a growing selection of class guides directly from some of the best players in the world. If you think you have what it takes to push high rating but need a good place to start, consider signing up. We have plenty of videos for you. Joining will also give you access to our premium Discord, where you can receive direct help from rank 1 players. So, if you're interested, be sure to head on over to skillcaps.com wow. Link in the description. One huge misconception people make about warriors is that they are an aggressive class. While they have sometimes seen play in aggressive comps like TSG, WMP requires a controlled defensive playstyle. One of the quickest ways you can lose games as WMP is by using Intervene improperly. Many inexperienced warriors will use Intervene in moments where it doesn't matter. Instead, you should always focus on using your Intervene on enemy ghosts, either when enemy offensive cooldowns are popped or when your healer is stuck in CC. Here we have a turbo cleave that has all of their offensives ready. We all know how much damage a turbo cleave can do to a mage, but luckily intervene can negate all of it. With bloodless and doom winds used, now is the perfect time to intervene. The mage is already low on HP, and despite the healer not being in CC, turbo cleave damage is enough to force cauterize. The Intervene redirects all damage to the warrior. Even though this damage is reduced due to plate, it is still scary. To counteract that, the warrior uses Die by the Sword. When Intervene is active on the target, Die by the Sword will deflect all of the damage that gets transferred onto the warrior. With the combination of Intervene and Die by the Sword, the warrior was able to completely deny the cooldowns from the Turbo Cleave. Even though mages are relatively tanky, they still need lots of support against melee cleaves like Turbo and Windwalker DK in order to survive. In a comp like Warrior Mage, your Intervene needs to be used precisely. Remember, you need to be using your defensive tools in order to open up more kill attempts for your team. If you're able to gradually wear down the enemy team, they will eventually run out of defensives and have no way to respond to combustion. Arms Warriors also have access to one of the strongest team defensive cooldowns in the game, War Banner. Just like Intervene, this is an ability that can easily be wasted by inexperienced warriors. The strength of War Banner is incredibly clear when playing against setup based comps as you can deny an entire setup from the enemy team. If you use War Banner right before a long CC like Polymorph lands on your healer, you can shut down an enemy kill attempt by yourself. Against Windwalker, Mage, and Holy Paladin, you should primarily be concerned with setups involving Combustion or Leg Sweep. Here, we can see that Combustion is on cooldown, but Leg Sweep has been used. With both Mage and Paladin in a stun and Monk cooldowns available, the CC chain must be stopped. The Mage is able to shimmer away to cast a Polymorph, and with quick reactions, the Warrior instantly uses War Banner. With War Banner denying the enemy setup off Leg Sweep, the WMP is able to sneak a Ring of Frost on the enemy Paladin while getting the Mage low. With the Mage low on HP, the Paladin is forced to trinket the Ring. The clutch play of saving War Banner defensively was able to transition the WMP into the aggressors and turn around pressure instantly. Remember, while playing Warrior Mage, you must think primarily about defensive. You need to keep your Paladin out of CC as much as possible so that eventually the enemy team runs out of defensives. 
teams, so you need to prioritize using War Banner defensively. And if Intervene and War Banner weren't already enough to deny enemy setups, there is one more cooldown that has tremendous importance in WMP, and it is Intimidating Shout. One of the biggest mistakes Warriors can make in this comp is wasting Intimidating Shout. Remember, most of your control in this comp comes from your Mage and Paladin cross CC, but sometimes Intimidating Shout can be used to open up or deny a win condition. Here, we can see a Polymorph has just landed on the Paladin, and the enemy healer is now pushed up on the pillar. When a Holy Paladin pushes in aggressively like this, it usually means they have either Hammer of Justice or Blinding Light available. Both of these spells require the Paladin to be near the enemy, and either one of these spells can be chained into massive CC on the Paladin. With Combustion use and this potential CC chain available, multiple targets need to be shut down. The Warrior recognizes this and uses Intimidating Shout, breaking up the CC chain from both the enemy mage and the enemy paladin. Without this CC, it is almost certain that a CC chain would have followed on the paladin. Instead, the CC chain was broken up, and winds up forcing trinkets from multiple enemy targets. The WMP is able to ride out this reversal with a quick swap to the enemy healer, forcing even more CDs. Intimidating Shout should always be used as a value trade against the enemy team when playing WMP. We will cover its use in offensive CC chains later, but it is a huge defensive option for your team. Remember that it shares DR with Dragon's Breath, so be aware of that. All in all though, you should prioritize your AoE fear when it can hit more multiple enemy targets, prioritizing moments where you can deflect enemy setups. Now let's bring everything together and see how WMP can use its defensive options to open up counter-aggression with cross CC. Here, we have a Windwalker Mage team, which is capable of doing massive burst setups. Remember, it is crucial that Intervene gets saved for strong goes from the enemy team. Here, we can see the enemy Paladin mounted and running forward. This is a clear indication that a huge go is coming. Here, the enemy team makes a great play, cross CCing with Hammer of Justice and Paralysis at the same time. Knowing a huge setup is coming, the warrior instantly stormbolts the mage. Combustion gets used, and now is a perfect time to intervene. Not only will it deflect damage from the combustion, but now the warrior is on top of the mage to soak meteor damage. Meteor splits damage on every targeted hits, so this cuts its damage in half. Now that the kill is deflected, the WMP has found an opportunity to counterattack. Our warrior starts the CC chain on the paladin with double fear onto the mage. Remember that you should always look to get value out of your intimidating shout, trying to use it on multiple targets if possible. This fear opens up a 3v1 situation on the enemy team with all three targets now in CC. With no stops available, the WMP is able to convert the AoE fear into a cross CC with a full ring of frost onto the enemy paladin. Following up the Ring of Frost, our Holy Paladin charges in to extend the CC chain with a Blinding Light, followed by a Hammer of Justice. Remember that there is no cookie cutter setup for this comp. You should be using whatever CC options you have available to start CC chains and open up 3v1 situations. With this CC chain, the enemy Paladin is forced to trinket and use Blessing of Sacrifice. The enemy team is now in an incredibly vulnerable position. With some keen defensive play, our team was able to survive major enemy cooldowns and instantly turn around pressure with the CC chain onto the enemy healer. It is this constant transition between defensive and offensive play that is so important for gradually wearing down at the enemy team. In this next clip, we will see how Mage Paladin Cross CC can even be used defensively to both stop an enemy go and to allow the Paladin to drink, opening up a win condition based on mana. Here we have the same DK cleave from before with cooldowns popped from the monk. With both paladins relatively low on mana, this game will likely come down to a mana battle. There are limited opportunities to drink against Windwalker DK, but cross CC opens up options to do so. With most of the monk's damage over, it's time to push in. Our paladin charges in and lands an HOJ on the enemy paladin at the same time our mage sneaks a polymorph on the enemy DK. Seeing this, the monk is forced to retreat, even with some of their offensive cooldown remaining. With a DK and Paladin in CC and the Monk in retreat, it is now a perfect time to drink. Our Paladin recognizes his opportunity and mounts to the other side of the map while his team is topped. You should remember that WMP is an attrition-based comp. You aren't looking for 100-0 setups like RMP. Instead, you are looking to gradually wear down the enemy team. An overlooked win condition is healer mana, and so it's important in longer games to use your cross CC in order to find moments to drink. And there you have it, some of the most important parts of Warrior Mage Holy Paladin. Remember that the goal of this comp is to look for small and consistent setups to cross CC enemy teams while using the defensive toolkit of a warrior to deflect enemy 
goes. If you're struggling with this comp, focus on using cross CC as frequently as possible and prioritize using things like intervene and war banner for big burst setups. If you do so, you will truly find success at this comp. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon.